A warm welcome to today's print day. Before we get started, a brief agenda so you roughly know what you're in for today. A brief uh, round of uh, introduction. My name is uh, Leon Huppert and I'm in sales and consulting at Valantic. So this is the business unit within Valantic that deals with PIM and PIM related topics. And I will talk about this a little later so that you understand the organization. And I'll hand over to Elena. Good morning, everyone. My name is Elena Flaum, and for 12 years I have been with uh, Strack Norma in marketing. I generate a website and our web shop. I look after the PIM system. I maintain product data from import to export. And for this, I generate various jobs and presets. And I also manage PIM users with all their roles and their rights. And to make sure that our products can be distributed in various uh, distribution channels. I actually also create these output channels and my colleague would also like to briefly introduce herself and I'll hand on the floor. Good morning and welcome. My name is Melissa Zaka. Roughly 10 months ago, I joined Strack Norma in operative marketing and my responsibilities include the organization and uh, attendance of uh, trade fairs, social media activities and the generation of templates for um, distributing uh, to our print media. Let's continue the role of PIM and database publishing in the digital transformation today using uh, Strack Norma as an example. What are we planning to do? Of course, we want to introduce you to Valantic and who's Strack, so you know who you're dealing with. Then I would like to describe the way from uh, the scratch to the uh, system selection. So uh, the avenue that we have uh, embarked upon. Uh, Strack Norma they had uh, some uh, challenges, very exciting. Strack from the valley of tears to success at the end of the day so this is the story what uh, um, uh, Strack Norma was enabled to do through PIM and database management. So this is what we're trying to do today. Let's start with Valentic. Valentic, one of the biggest uh, digital integrators in Europe, big company with many different uh, units and disciplines that we look after. Ah, uh, it's working. Some facts and figures, and I don't know, really don't know well on this. When we became part of Valentic in October 2020, um, the headcount was still 1,800. So we're on a course for growth. Our vision is to uh, actually accompany and serve customers from A to Z within the framework of digital transformation. We don't want to be the biggest, but the most respected brand. The slides uh, will be handed out afterwards, and this is uh, why I do not dwell on this. Uh, it's important to understand that there is Valantic, and uh, there are several topics that we deal with, and this is why we have four big divisions. We have an ERP or SAP division, where we look at SAP topics, then smart industries, digital strategy analytics. And if you're interested, uh, what you what we do there? If you enjoy a, a, a type can Porsche Taycan, then you have your own app with your onboard harness. And this is what we do. But this is not our topic today. We are in CX, so everything revolving around the customer experience. And this includes e-commerce, digital marketing, data-driven marketing, but also PIM. And this is um, how you basically come full circle with our PIM activities. Then on, then on CX, of the 3,000 employees, uh, there's 830 working in CX, so we're the biggest unit in Valantic. We're among the top 10 service providers in the DACH region. And one important term on this uh, uh, chart is uh, um, each business unit we have different software solutions on board but we're very agnostic uh, this brings us to Valantic the uh, unit and now the competence centers we are the PIM competence center of Valantic and as I initially said we are the experts for PIM 
what do we do in concrete terms? We have two big uh, big units. This is the first unit is consulting. So everything from uh, zero to the uh, system selection. This is my hobby horse. And the second unit deals with the integration. And I would like to and the, uh, the stress the term system agnostic. Why? Well, in the first unit, when we talk about a look at the requirements, <coughs> It makes no sense to see through a system glass um, because you're trying to press a circle into, you're trying to square the circle really. And um, this is why you should be open, whether it's e-commerce, uh, PIM, database publishing or whatever, this should be avoided, squaring the circle. We are based in Siegen, this is where I come from, but we have a second office in Dornbirn and in Austria um, at Lake Constance. As I said, uh, we do consulting. We understand ourselves as consultants for PIM and PIM-related topics. And this means data-placed publishing and data syndication as well. At this point, I'll leave it at that because we're running out of time. Let's continue with Strack. Well, the Strack Norma company it produces components for mold making. It's a family business with over uh, 100 years of experience in the uh, industry. Strack Norma offers over 300,000 products and we in marketing are always challenged with how uh, our products uh, can be presented to our customers quickly and efficiently. Print media, printed matters are important medium to address our existing and potential customers. In earlier days, we always um, manually created our print products. Our product changes or product designs were slow and very uh, painstaking. Add to this, our data was managed decentrally. Product data was generated in different departments sales, uh, product development, IT department, and uh, marketing. And as a result, several media um, did not show our products consistently, caused by a typo, by different attitudes and phraseology. Um, we produce uh, products from steel and one clerk says, well, this is material steel. The other one actually uh, opted for an abbreviation and said ST and number three defined it as a tool steel. And this is how uh, the data were represented differently um, in different media. And this was exactly our problem. And um, we could not produce brochures fast enough. We could not respond to customer deeds fast enough. This is uh, um, why we realized that uh, producing print media manually no longer worked for us. We had to do something about it. And this is why we decided to install and select a, an intelligent product management system. Yes, you can go from here. Yes, you can, can you? So again, in summary, this is uh, what um, Mrs. Flaum said. The design of print media. Now I will briefly cover what has happened so far and how the collaboration really started. It was just an order for a neutral evaluation, which we did. We focused uh, on the requirements, as always in an evaluation, because this is the cornerstone. Uh, without a target, you don't have a pathway or roadmap. And finally, the strategy. In a nutshell, we actually made many workshops together and remotely, but I'll talk about this a little later because this was really so special about this evaluation. We spent a lot of time to uh, define the shortlist based on this. Um, the system presentations were done remotely with all of the manufacturers in parallel. We actually built up an assessment portal where all of the parties involved, also on the Strack part, were able to send their personal evaluations. They have facts and to decide facts based. And on the right hand side, you can see this then. 
all the impressions, all the feedbacks, the opinions were actually put uh, on in the balance, and we then ended up in con with content serve. Uh, um, uh, in cooperation with VAC2. And then COVID arrived. Would have been too easy, really. Uh, so we had a mental, uh, a brief mental break in the process. And many would have said, okay, no, we'll wait and see. But Strack Norma didn't. After a very brief break, Strack said, no, we will leverage this COVID-19 pandemic uh, efficiently. And uh, the management said, yes, go for it. And this was the special thing about this uh, evaluation. Well, the replacement of the access database, this was really an obstacle because it, it was an historically grown system. And what was so special about this cooperation? Well, it's not uh, very typical that uh, uh, during a pandemic um, uh, to invest all resources in a PIM project. For many, this is a step back because many say, well, let's wait and see because there's lots of security involved, lots of money is involved. Do you really know whether it's well invested? But all communication was remote. Can you imagine? Everything was digital. And especially for s with such a project, it is extremely important that the, the soft skills are also fine, that there is a human basis to work on with all of the uh, pr uh, system presentations. The human factor is so important, but it worked nevertheless, fine even. And... Um, and uh, uh, it also worked because there was an extensive release of human resources on the part of uh, uh, Strack or Norma. Um, uh, successful projects are made with men, and uh, this was also the case here. Well, yeah, back to me. The uh, project uh, for the PIN introduction and implementation was handed in five stages. In the first stage, we initially analyzed our product data and optimized and uh, standardized this data. So material steel is always now referred to as steel and some data was also cleansed, so to speak. And then we prepared the PIM database by uh, clustering uh, different products with uh, the same characteristics in product groups. Then we defined attributes for the characteristics and then the attributes uh, were assigned to product categories. By hierarchy and uh, this maintenance or management structure, uh, the management of data was reduced, the effort involved, and this is why our data uh, is now saved in one database and everybody has access to this database. As the second uh, step, um, we actually created a MAM database with the technical drawings, the instruction uh, drawings, etc. And uh, the uh, big benefit of uh, content surf was that PIM and um, uh, DAM database are on the same platform and that the link uh, of products and images uh, can be done automatically with a preset. And this again reduced efforts tremendously and speeded up the process. And the third stage was the definition of distribution channels, export channels, considering the uh, channel specific requirements. In the ERP system, for instance, we're only allowed to transfer the data when the product has an article number. In the web shop, uh, the data has to be furnished uh, if a product is uh, d uh, designed as a, an uh, order product and has as an order key. And in the fourth stage, we defined the interfaces with the ERP system, the web shop, the website, and the InDesign program, because this is the commit interface. And last but not least, we generated templates for printed media. And uh, this can be commented on by Melissa. I started working with the print um, when a colleague of mine went left for maternal leave and I took over her job. At that point in time, I had no previous experience about InDesign, let alone PIM. 
at the end of the day, um, in the early stage, it was quite a challenge to learn both systems at the same time to be able to work independently on the generation of templates. But at the end of the day, it was not as difficult as I thought. Uh, onboarding was very fast. And in very little time, I created templates and I always became faster with each new template. My approach for generating a template for one uh, or several catalog pages, I check the data um, that Mrs. Flaum has main managed. And this is why I know which attributes I have to use. Then on a piece of paper, I sketched out a structure, a tree or a page layout. And I always strongly follow the, for the previous templates to obtain a consistent look and feel. Then I transfer my sketch to a real template and define which content or information from content serve uh, uh, is to be taken over and then link my fields with the uh, uh, attributes. Then. I generate the design rules or policies and preset uh, formats and with the magnet then I fix it. We generate templates for exporting flyers, catalogs or even press releases and just to give you an idea we have 24 brochures and very often the um, updates and uh, changes wanted we have three different catalogs with up to 1,100 uh, pages and with one template I can cover several products and even whole chapters. So one template covers a number of products so I do not actually have to create a new template for each product or each catalog page. In summary, it can be said that through the automation of print it exports, we've saved a lot of time. If there's anything that I really hate, then it is uh, searching for content that I want to export. Now there's only one single uh, source of truth with all of the information and uh, uh, can be rest assured that this is updated. And we have now more time in marketing to devote to the important creative part. Exactly. We have become more flexible. We can respond to customer needs faster. If a customer, for instance, wants a brochure on a specific product and we don't have it at that point in time, then it can be generated in no time. Uh, and the customer doesn't have to wait for too long and, and then lose interest in, in the product. So this has really paid off uh, to introduce this in Strack Norma. We work across departments and everyone has access to and uh, to use uh, and actually um, uh, access to the database and to benefit from this uh, new system. Wow. <laughs> We're around for the rest of the day. Sorry uh, for being late. Uh, we had planned it uh, completely differently. I hope um, you have some take-home lessons. And if not, uh, see you over the day. Thank you.